Students, today you are going to start a new topic with me, endocrinology. First, what is endocrinology? Endocrinology is the study of hormones and endocrine glands. Hormones that we all know, they are released by glands or specialized cells into the circulating blood and influence the target cells at an other location in the body. Uh, these hormones they are carried by the circulation to the cells throughout the body and as far as their mechanism of action is concerned, they bind with the receptors and initiate cell reactions. Some hormones, they are very target specific and they specifically act on the targets, for example, ACTH, which affect on the adrenal cortex to st uh, stimulate the secretion of hormones. And some, there are some hormones which uh, affect different types of cells of the body. For example, thyroid hormones. Then we have a system of different uh, chemical messengers. The activities of cells, tissues of the body, they are coordinated by the different chemical messengers and they interact with one another to maintain the homeostasis of the body. As we all know that the neurotransmitters, they are released by the nerve exons of the neurons into the synaptic junctions. And uh, endocrine hormones are released by the glands into the blood. And the neuroendocrine hormones, they are released by the neurons into the blood. And uh, what are paracrines and autocrines? You can understand from the diagram. Paracrines, they are secreted by the cells into the ECF and they affect the neighboring cell. They affect the nearby cell. And uh, the autocrine, autocrine, they are released by the cells into the ECF and they affect the same cells that produce them. And regarding the endocrine, I have told you that they release from the uh, gland and they go to the circulation and they affect the distant cell which is located at a distant location. And lastly, we have the cytokines. Cytokines, they are secreted by the cells into the ECF and they function as autocrines, paracrines or endocrines. And the example is the interleukin. Uh, in the next few chapters, we discuss mainly the hormonal system and uh, the hormone system, they play a key role in regulating almost all body functions, including metabolism, uh, growth, development, uh, and reproduction. Here is a slide of uh, some important glands of the body. First of all, we have the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland through hypothalamic hypophysial portal system. We will study in the next chapters. And hypothalamus, it releases certain hormones which act on the pituitary gland. And so the pituitary gland then release further hormones. So a uh, few examples are corticotropin releasing factor, thyrotropin releasing factor, gonadotropin releasing factor. They are released by the hypothalamus. And then this is the master gland of the body, which has two parts, anterior and posterior. Uh, and Various hormones they are released from anterior pituitary and only two hormones are released from the posterior pituitary gland. Then we have a small gland here, pineal gland. Then we have a very important gland of our body is the thyroid gland, which releases thyroid hormones. And I have told you the thyroid hormone has multiple function. It affects various cells of the body. Then we have small glands, four glands behind the thyroid. They are parathyroid gland. Then we have the thymus gland and we have the adrenal glands. Adrenal glands are also very, very important. Um, it has two parts, adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. Cortical hormones are very important. Medullary hormones are very important. Then we have the pancreas, which release insulin and glucagon. Uh, then we have ovaries. Uh, and then we have the testes. We will see uh, in a table. Uh, about the various hormones that are released by these glands and the hormones uh, secreted from the stomach and the small intestine you will be studied uh, i think you have studied in git
the from the anterior pitch tree there will be the release of thyroid stimulating hormone um here it's the nature we uh, we will see the what are the nature what are the classes proteins may be, uh, hormones may be peptide they may be steroid they may be amine derivatives so uh, from anterior pitch tree there will be the release of thyroid stimulating hormone then acth then fsh follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone then from posterior pitch tree there will be an antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin from thyroid there will be the release of thyroxine t4 and t3 triiodothyronine and calcitonin then the parathyroid hormone is released from the parathyroid gland aldosterone and cortisol they are the main hormones released from the adrenal cortex then epinephrine and norepinephrine are released from the adrenal medulla melatonin they are released from the pineal gland which regulates our sleep cycle okay then the insulin is released from the pancreas glucagon is also released from the pancreas and testosterone from the testes and estrogen and progesterone from the ovaries so this is the list of the various glands of the body and these are the hormones and we will study one by one all of these hormones in the coming chapters okay now regarding the classification of hormones uh, we uh, have three classes of hormones the uh, proteins and polypeptides steroids and derivatives of amino acid tyrosine regarding proteins and polypeptides the hormones secreted by the anterior and posterior pitch tree by the pancreas and by the parathyroid gland and in steroids uh, the hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex which are the cortisol and aldosterone by the ovaries estrogen and progesterone and by the testes the testosterone and of course by the placenta which are again estrogen and progesterone and then the derivatives of amino acid tyrosine we have the two and uh, glands and the two uh, four hormones the thyroxine and triiodothyronine from the thyroid and from the adrenal medulla epinephrine and norepinephrine we will see how uh, synthesis of the protein hormone take place proteins or polypeptides it's very simple uh, this is the nucleus here through the process of transcription messenger rna is formed messenger rna goes towards the cytoplasm here are the ribosomes this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum so um, a pre pro hormone is formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and which is then the pro hormone is then converted to the pro hormone and then it is uh goes to the golgi apparatus for packaging and then a hormone is formed the hormones they are stored in the secretory vesicles and when the stimulus comes for the hormone release these vesicles they fuse as you can see in the diagram these vesicles they fuse with the cell membrane and by the process of exocytosis the hormones they are released into the circulation steroid hormone synthesis take place steroid hormones they are usually synthesized from cholesterol much of the cholesterol comes from the plasma and uh, they simply as they are lipid soluble so they simply diffuse across the cell membrane and they enter the interstitial fluid and then into the blood and then the lastly amine hormones they are derived from the tyrosine amino acid tyrosine uh, uh, we have the two categories of hormones in the amino acid amine hormones thyroid and the epinephrine and norepinephrine from adrenal medulla thyroid hormones are synthesized and stored in the thyroid gland and they are incorporated into the protein thyroglobulin we will study in detail about the synthesis of thyroid hormones in the next chapters and then the hormone secretion occurs when the amines are split from the thyroglobulin how the how the hormones are regulated there are two mechanisms for the regulation of hormone the negative feedback and the positive feedback the negative feedback is self limiting what does it mean that the hormone has a biological actions which directly or indirectly inhibit further secretion of the hormone so the over secretion of hormone is prevented in negative feedback so what happen that when a stimulus comes and there will be the release of hormone 
and the products resulting from the action of hormone, they tend to suppress its further release. So the negative feedback, it ensure a proper level of hormone activity at the target cell. The example um, I can give you about the insulin that the insulin is a hormone which is secreted by the pancreas and the stimulus is the increased blood glucose level. When there will be increased blood glucose, insulin is secreted. Then what does the insulin do? Insulin, it uh, transfer all the glucose into the cells. Now there will be no rise in the glucose level. Blood glucose level will be decreased. When the blood glucose level will be decreased, so the insulin will also be decreased because the stimulus for the insulin release is the high blood glucose level. So when there will be no high blood glucose level, insulin secretion will be decreased. So this is the negative feedback which control the secretion of the insulin. It prevents the over secretion of any hormone. And what about positive feedback? Positive feedback is explosive. A hormone has an action that directly or indirectly causes more secretion of the hormone. So the example, a very famous example is the surge of luteinizing hormone that occur as a result of the estrogen on the anterior pitch tree before the ovulation. And when the LH is secreted, it acts on the ovaries to stimulate even more estrogen. So it is the uh, between LH and estrogen. Uh, first estrogen, it causes the surge of LH by uh, having the stimulatory effect on interior pitch tree. It causes release of LH. And when the LH is secreted, it acts on the ovaries to cause more secretion of estrogen. Now, how the transport of hormones occur, the water-soluble hormones, which are peptides and catecholamines, they are dissolved in plasma. They are not bound to any trans uh, plasma protein and they are transported from the site of senses to target tissue. And as far as the lipid soluble hormones, which are the steroid and the thyroid hormones, they circulate mainly bound to the plasma proteins. Various uh, cyclical variations, they occur in the hormone release. For example, secretion of growth hormone is increased during early period of sleep, but is reduced during later stages of sleep. Uh, and then the metabolic clearance rate. Metabolic clearance rate is defined as the rate of removal of hormone from the blood. And where's the two factors which increase or decrease the concentration of hormone in the blood is the rate of hormone secretion and the rate of removal of hormone from the blood. That's all for today. Students, thank you so much.